welcome to episode 222 of In Touch of iOS, the show that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I'm your host, Dave Ginsberg. My guest this week, returning guest, always great to have him, Chuck Joyner. How you doing, Chuck? I'm doing great, David. It's great to be here with um, with three esteemed gentlemen. Yes. Um, at we're, least that's, that's yeah, that's kind <laughs> they'll of... They'll show yeah. up soon, don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and you guys too. Yeah. How's that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's talking about the chat room. Yeah. So it's, it's and that voice there, Mr. Warren Sklar. How you doing, Warren? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's uh excited about our first week with the new stuff and toys and everything yeah. like that. We didn't really get to it. It's all in the, yeah, it's all in the wild week, this week. week. So we got we got a lot. A week of ago, about. yesterday we were we were salivating, and now we get to talk about it. absolutely. So that's good stuff. I look forward to it. And last but certainly not least, Jeff Gamet's back. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing all right, and uh, I'm happy to be here with with all of you. And I'm excited to see who the esteemed gentlemen are that show yeah. up. <laughs> Where are they? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yes, like Warren said, there is a lot to talk about. Uh, we have um, iPhone 14. We've had it for a week now. We can talk about that. Apple Watch. AirPods Pro are going to be coming very soon. And um, iOS 16, more stuff find. I mean... Like I said, we're going to probably put in a bunch of shows in to talk about the iOS 16 alone because there's so much. So, but uh, first off, let's just talk about this, some of the news stories that are out there this week. Got a couple here. And uh, first story, this was in um, uh, this was in iMore. Uh, developers can now pay Apple to access the weather. Weather kit subscriptions are now available to, for developers. Um, uh, if you have an app that uses a ton of weather data from Apple's weather kit, today is a good day for you, except for the part where you have to pay some money. Uh, today, Apple announced as this, as this week, uh, they made the Apple, the weather kit subscription available to developers. Uh, there's an update out there from the developers kit. I don't know if it said how much. Oh, there's the, uh, there's the pricing there. It's, uh, it's pretty up there. Uh, one million calls for m- per month is forty nine ninety nine. It goes all the way up from there. Uh, Chuck, what do you think? This is uh, something that, uh, I, if anything, is going to expand the coverage of weather because it was always, you know, uh, hit or miss of all those weather apps that are out there. Now we're gonna get some good ones, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like the fact that Apple's doing it. Um, it's one more service they offer, so therefore, it's a little bit more money in their coffers. <coughs> Pardon me. Sounds like I need to get in from the weather. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I think it's interesting that they are opening it up. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those catch 22s, you grab it and then you hold it for yourself, um, and make your weather app as good as you can, or do you open it up to developers and see what, you know, what they come up with. So, yeah, uh, you know, it's, I, I, I think we're going to see more of this because Apple is going to be get getting into, I think more providing materials and information and data for apps in the back end. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think if anything, this is going to expand even further. What do you think, Jeff? I know, I mean, we've talked about this last week that the sad, sad that dark sky is going to go end of life at the beginning of uh, 2023, but it's, it's in good hands. It's now in Apple's weather integrated app, but uh, I guess going to have some opportunities for other developers to, to, to to do this too, right? Uh, Okay. Well, first, I have to bag on Apple and the weather app just a little bit because yes, they've integrated a lot of what dark sky is into the weather app, but it's still not doing proper hyper local weather, which is why everyone wanted dark sky. Mm -hmm. So uh, the weather app needs to address that or uh, I'll be back to what I was before dark sky, where I use like four different apps, weather apps all the time because each one does one thing, right? Um, okay, now on to what you were actually asking me about. <laughs> um, yeah, so all of these companies or developers that make weather apps, they're paying someone to get the data that they need to show in the app. So um, um, if they're paying Apple for that data, it's it's no different than... Uh, if they're paying any of the other data aggregation services, hopefully what they're getting by uh, by paying Apple for this is uh, really good hyperlocal data since uh, since Apple owns Dark Sky now. Right. And uh, the problem, though, that I see with all of this is that uh, this is expensive for developers. It is. 
And since they already had to pay to to be able to use the weather data, that's not changing for them. Um, what's changing is where they they may get the data and how much they may be paying. I I don't know if Apple's uh, pricing is better than what uh, what developers have been paying before or not. You know, if if I was smart, I would have actually looked into that before the show tonight. That's yeah, okay. It's a. I mean, we we know that the weather data is expensive. We know that the all these weather apps are monetizing some in some way, shape, or form by charging a you know a, a monthly rate or whatever they're designed to do. Like you know, carrots a good example. They they went to a, a one a one time payment to to uh, to to monthly rates now. So, uh, but uh, what do you think, Warren? Uh, I'm missing something, obviously. So, dark skies. Before Apple bought them, was an own, their own company that pulled the weather data, the hyper local data from somewhere. So I'm not sure where, like, who who is providing the weather information to these companies in the beginning, and that leads me to my question of why does a developer need to feel the need to pay Apple for data that's got to be provided by multiple sources at this point of, of her life and you know, technology and, and weather. I mean, where, where's the sources come from is, is what I'm asking. How come developers can't go on the internet and say, you know, provide you know, pr- weather providers and there's not a million of them that's willing to sell them something. Okay. So there, from what I understand, there's a handful of, uh, of weather data aggregators right. out there. So the, so these would be the, the back end uh, parts that uh, that the app developers are paying for and uh, and so that that sources like uh, like weather underground um, and uh, and then you can get data from NOAA and I don't know uh, what NOAA's pricing is right um, uh, so anyhow so there's this handful of companies that uh, that are aggregating the data so from what I understand, when you buy into Apple's weather kit, you're buying into uh, a single source that's aggregating multiple sources for you. And then you're also paying for the privilege to hook directly into everything else that Apple is doing in their own weather Wait. ecosystem. Stop for a second. Then how is that not, how would, in your case, that would be the most the worst case of monopolizing uh, from Apple, right? Because essentially you're telling me that company A or company B, which is Apple, is purchasing weather data from one, two, three, four, five, six to come to them. They're buying them, they're subscribing to them. And then Apple company B is going to say, okay, for five, ten dollars a month, here's all the stuff that I'm buying from these people. That doesn't sound right to me or legal. And and that's why we're not Apple's legal team. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. you think that's what they're doing? You're, you think Apple I, is paying these top weather predictor companies, and and they're aggregating it in. So developers could go right to that company, one of those companies. I'm assuming they'll sell them something. Sure. Or, or go to Apple and get all of their data that they got from everybody else filtered in. To them, I mean, the, yeah. the way I which would be a good deal, is, which would be, I guess, I mean, it depends how accurate you want your weather app to be, right? So, if you wanted to pay Apple for that developer fee, you could do that because they get multiple sources, right. or you could go to one of those sources if it's cheaper and still be probably fairly accurate. Yeah, I, I guess we we don't know where the data is going, where the data is coming from. We don't know who who, who Apple is paying for subscriptions, so it's kind of hard to to really uh, yeah to Just really know. Interesting did you have, did you have something to add, John? Well, just, you know, Warren said, it could, well, how do you say Warren, you know, almost as accurate or less accurate, I forget. But, you know, so if if I'm checking in on a weather app, I mean, I want the best information I can get. As we all do. And so if somebody's, if somebody's out there soliciting less than great data from, even from an original source, I'm, if... If I compare that with what I can get either through Apple or up till now, Dark Sky, you know, well, I'm always going to go with the better one because, you know, it's better. It's I'm 
it's not just a casual thing. I'm, you know, in a lot of cases, I'm relying on the weather app to tell me how to dress, you know, how to travel, all those things. So I understand that, but like, remember, there's that weather app that gives you snarky x to comments. Yeah, Karen, 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 so, yeah. I mean, a company like that is trying to make money off their little snarky comments and things and people doing that. And if Apple says, we'll charge you X amount of money for this weather data or company B says X minus whatever they offered, I, I think there's a compelling reason for somebody to save money for that. But I, I don't, I mean, you and I must just have different values because, you know, I don't, I don't, the snarky stuff. Okay. That's been carrots distinguishing characteristic, but at the end of the day, if it's not giving me the weather information I want, then it's just a toy. And I it was, it was before Apple toys. decided to filter them all day. I mean, Apple just started doing this process. So before Apple did this, the, the, you were getting accurate data before that. So it, you know, well, we'll see. Mm. We'll see where the data is coming from. Yeah. We don't know. I said without yeah. really having firsthand knowledge. I mean, they really haven't advertised it, nor have I seen any stories about it. So, other than the, the well, story, which tells us that Apple is opening up with the, the the weather API, and and we'll see where it goes. So, cool. uh, next story here is uh, iOS adopt the iOS iOS sixteen proves to be more popular than iOS fifteen was last year. I, iPhone users are adopting iOS 16 at a quicker pace than they, they adopted iOS 15 last year. According to some updated data from an analytics company, Mixpanel, nine days after launch, iOS 16 is installed on an estimated 23% of iPhones. Uh, uh, 10 days after its launch in 2021, iOS 15 was only at about 19.3%. So it's, I mean, it's a pretty good jump here. I mean, we always know that, uh, that iOS tends to be a pretty, you know, uh, a pretty high adoption rate you know, as as time goes on as it is anyway. But interesting to see that iOS 16 is a little higher. But, you know, I think iOS 15 wasn't as good. Not that is, iOS is any better with all the bugs we're going to talk about here in a minute here, but a bit here. So, but what do you think, Jeff? Uh, I think that iOS 16 has uh, more consumer accessible flashy features mm-hmm. that, that, are making it more enticing to the to the average user, um, th- like like the the whole lock screen thing. Right. I think for a lot of people, that's reason enough to upgrade, and um, you know, and then they get all the other stuff to go along with it. But yeah. it, I think it's the the flashy consumer focus features that are really driving the upgrade. Yeah. What do you think, Warren? No, I agree with Jeff. Uh, there was de- there's definitely more fun things to show your friends in this release than it was last last year, and um, you know I don't even remember what last year's key features were to be honest with you. But I'll forget this year's key features. I think we all do. Sure. <laughs> this point. Yeah. So so I um, was you know, but um, yeah, I agree with Jeff. It's just it's uh it's got some nifty features in there. Chuck. Um, you know, Warren seems to be focused on fun. Um, you know, I, I'm not fo- I'm not focused on fun. You know, I I want usable features, right. and I feel like the features I'm seeing in iOS 16 are making a difference in the way I use the phone, and that I think that says it all. You know, it's, and I'm sure this has been true for every kind of release. That you know, one release maybe there were features in it that Jeff used more than I would, so it was a better release for him. For the for for me. This the, the the and I don't want to get too far ahead of us, but for example, the lock screen widgets are something that I really do use, and I'm already a week. What is it? Weekend? Yeah, week and a half in. You know, I'm I'm learning to depend on. So, you know, I I, I agree with Jeff's assessment, but I I don't see any of them as fun. I just see them as yeah, useful. Useful. Yeah, it's good. I, I would I would uh, agree with that. Um, and then uh, just our last story, we're getting a little short on stories this week since we got a lot to talk about. Uh, Apple now says Apple Watch Series 8 and the SE2 will support Bluetooth 5.3 uh, when Apple Watch Series 8 and second gen SE were announced. They, in the comparison p- page, they said both models would support 5.0, but now Apple is saying that they'll actually support the newer 5.3 standard. Uh, the, the website still says 5.0, but uh, 
because five, 5.3 is supposed to include several feature enhancements uh, with the potential to improve reliability, energy efficiency, and user experience. Because you know, blue, you know how we know how Bluetooth is. Not sure about the LE audio. Uh, and, you know that I know that that's a big thing with the new for newer version of Bluetooth. Uh, what do you think, Jeff? I don't get why they wouldn't tell us this right up front. Yeah, strange. And why it's a thing that's coming out now. It's. I mean, it's not like it would tip their hand at uh, at other features. So, and, and it can't be like a last minute change where they swapped out the chips because this is something that would have been set long ago. Yeah. Yeah. So what's up with that? What is up with that? Uh, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think, Jock? <laughs> you know, I mean, it, somebody decided it's time. Oh, time to move. Move on to it. Yeah, you know, I, well, yeah, but why not announce that it's five point three initially instead of doing it as an oh by the way thing? Actually, I think I came up with one total reach of a reason, which is uh, uh, you know you have to get uh, uh, approval for the different radios you're using. Oh. Maybe they they already had the five point zero approval, and until they they got uh, five point three approval, they just couldn't say that. Yeah, yeah. But something I haven't been clear on, though, I mean, before the, oh, by the way, were was it active or did it get turned on in the 16.0.1 update? That's a good question. I don't know. If, isn't that hardware? A piece of hardware? It's hardware, but, but you can tell the hardware um, to artificially uh, limit which version of Bluetooth it, it uh, uses. Yeah, they could have just done that and then, uh, you know, to the, mm-hmm. the line, so. yeah. So maybe they they had the right chip in there, and uh, and then in software limited to five until they got through regulatory approval right, or right. or Tim oh, was yes. in a better mood. I <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, oh, if it, yeah, I, I mean, the only reason I would be excited about this is every so often my watch doesn't wake up with my phone like my watch my phone don't always talk um in in some cases and i have to reboot my watch and maybe that's a bluetooth limitation that would be fixed uh with new versions of bluetooth Bluetooth, yeah i mean the only other benefit would be listening music through your watch and i don't do that so um so i guess the only benefit to me would be better communication with bluetooth devices uh around me and um, potentially lower uh battery yeah uh power consumption uh, well, potentially yeah, that would be good although time. you know i just experienced it last night i forgot my my iphone in my car last night and you know normally i would go to my watch and be able to do the the, the alarm and say you know where is it so i could hear it and of course it said it lost connection and I went, it's not that far it's just over my garage so I was kind of, I thought to me, that's kind of a bug. That's never, that's never happened to me before. I've done that before I left it in my car and it's still going to reach that far from here. So another, another, another check of bug bugs we're, we're, we're experiencing. Um, uh, but yeah, that's news this week. Let's uh, move on to the topics. Uh, beta, uh, iOS 16.1 beta two came out, uh, They've uh, they've added the uh, lock screen charging indicator, uh, copy and paste alert fix, and the battery status update. A uh, uh, couple of things that are in there is uh, the battery status bar. Visual change is now much larger. People were complaining it was too small. I, I mean, I guess it is small. It is especially small. I've, I've looked on it on the 10R I have here, and it was really small. Uh, and and it's, it is a bit bigger, a little easier to see that the indicator. Uh, and the font, they changed that. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of cosmetic fix, but the biggest thing was the, was the bugs, which some are partially fixed, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. Uh, but that copy and paste fit, uh, pain in the butt. Every time you'd copy and paste something, you did get the prompt is, do you want to allow paste or not? I think was a, a bit of a nuisance. Um, Warren, you the beta guy on the right. iPhone, uh, what, what's your experience so far on 16.1? Well, my experience was before when I put the first beta on that GPS stopped working. <laughs> I was just walking around in a circle for about five days, <laughs> just walking in circles because I didn't know where I was and I was lost. So when I finally made it home, I reverted. I told you I reverted back to the. Uh, so I'm like, so this time I'm like, okay, 
because as soon as the beta came out, I wanted it. So I actually did something I never do, and I made a full backup in on my Mac, uh, which happens to have enough space because it's stupid. What like three hundred gigs of uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, a Mac backup for for the phone is crazy large. It's it about the same size as it's just so I've run out of room in the pad. I have laptops that won't hold it anymore, and I had to use iMazing because iMazing right. is the only thing that lets you change the backup location. Right. That's a whole other show. But anyway, so I made the backup first, and then um, I went outside after the uh, the update, and it found me, and I said, "Okay, I'm fine, and everything's good." That's the only thing that. Yeah. I really cared about so i did that and then i ha- was brave enough to do the watch and it's fine are you back on <laughs> yeah we know you're brave uh are, are you are you uh are you back on uh back on on the 16.1 now back on the beta 2 out or are you just do you wait i'm not on the beta yeah i put uh, on okay. on my phone I why did i even ask <laughs> yeah, well, i mean it's worse it can happen right um so i put that on there and i uh the, the ipad one came out too so i put them on everything basically yeah. Um, we know <laughs> because uh, honestly, the only thing that was broken for the first beta was the GPS right. to me, at least. So, and and actually, it's fixed things that you guys are suffering with now. So, and we're not suffering anymore. Uh-huh. So, but uh, Jeff, uh, well, and, uh, did it come out? Yeah, 16.0.2 yeah, did. I'll, I'll, yeah, t- I'll yeah, talk yeah, about today. that in just a minute. Uh, yeah, Jeff, yeah. and then iPad OS is still in beta. It's, I believe it's a beta eight or beta nine, I, I, yes, I, 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 one of those. Yeah. I think it's getting close on 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 the iPad. I know Ventura uh, Mac OS Ventura is very close too. It's uh, that beta eight just came out, I believe, today. So, uh, so we're getting close for the rest of the OSs. Um, so, uh, Chuck, I know you don't do any beta, so we, I, I won't even ask unless you have any other comments on it. <laughs> no, I mean I really don't. I I I still I, I say this every time beta the beta discussion comes up. You know it, and I find it a little disturbing that. Yeah. Um, okay, we find out that beta 16.0.2 or whatever the number is, you know, fixes this bug and it gets plastered all over yep. the web. And if I'm one of the people that's, you know, not on a beta and I'm experiencing that bug, right. then I'm looking at it, beating on the thing saying, you know, it's supposed to be fixed. It's supposed to be fixed. And so, I, you know, it's it's good news that they figured it out and it will be fixed soon. But I, I can't help but question the the clarity of some of this communication and part of it is the the, the tech web and part of it is apple you know having this open beta program so right. um you know and and i don't know maybe i mean maybe you all don't depend on your phone the way well, that i find that i do i do so <laughs> i don't put it on my primary phone <laughs> well see that's the thing you know so so you know you have the luxury of two phones yeah. and you know but not not everybody does right. and that's where I just I, I I really question some of this. Yeah. So it's it's kind of a mixed bag. I mean, it's good that they figured out what it is, and you'd like to think that you know within a week or two you'll be getting the fix. Yep. On the other hand, you know, it's I want the fix now since I know they've identified it. No, nope, I agree. I agree. Uh, Jeff, have you been working uh, iPad beta? I know on your one iPad that's uh, been running okay. Yeah, uh, the beta is running fine on the one iPad, my sacrificial iPad. Right. Uh, same here yeah, my like, two sacrificial ipads over <laughs> yeah like, like you chuck uh i will not put beta on any mission critical device nope. so uh, that means my iphone my apple watch my big ipad pro uh they do not run beta nope um a couple other things just to mention tvos 16.1 is uh out as well as watch uh os 9.1 uh, as always, TVOS doesn't really have much of anything they share. Uh, then WatchOS, uh, I don't know if you, have you seen anything worn on, on what you have been running on your watch? Yeah, nothing. Okay. Uh, and uh, the, with when sixteen one that it does come out with the uh, iOS sixteen one and TVOS sixteen that one, the Fitness Plus is now going to be available without the need of an Apple Watch. I know they did announce that during uh, 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 during the. Uh, the last uh, keynote. So, uh, so that's going to be uh, interesting to see how that goes and which is great because not everybody wants an Apple watch and I can't understand why, but there are people out there who do not want them. So, uh, so that's going to be interesting to see where that goes. Uh, but well, it, it'll be out soon because all these bugs we'll talk about here in a little bit. Uh, yeah. I think we need to get accelerating here. So um, the AirPods pro uh, those are shipping. They've have shipped. Uh, I did order a pair. I'm going to have it tomorrow. It's going to, as we record this, 
Uh, so I'll definitely get to report back uh, what my thoughts are on 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 that. Uh, I think a lot of people got are getting their orders on Friday, but I'm, I'm hearing that the shipping dates are getting really pushed out pretty pretty far now, uh, mid to late October, sometime in, in, into November. So I don't think any of you here have, have purchased the AirPods Pro as of yet. Mm-mm. Yeah, not yet. So uh, interesting to see there. Uh, Apple is releasing an, a firmware upgrade just ahead of the launch, which is kind of bizarre. I've never seen them pre pre release AirPods and then have a firmware upgrade uh, right off the bat. But uh, I think that kind of that did actually happen with uh, with the iPhone too this time around too. We went to sixteen dot zero dot one. So uh, so uh, interesting and uh, got a link in the show notes how how you actually can go in and check your firmware and be able to make sure it's installed right when they come. I'll, I'll be doing this tomorrow as well. Uh, so uh, so that is uh, AirPods uh, Pro. And um, interesting thing, uh, there was, this was an article actually. Apple did explain with this AirPods Pro there, uh, were, there there's been quite a quite a debate whether or not. The silicon ear tips are going to be compatible with uh, uh, with the original AirPods Pro, and they officially say they are not. They're notably denser mesh than the second gen ear tips. And Apple did not provide any other details. They do have a support article to, to talk about it, uh, but they do say that uh, they're not compatible. I mean, I don't understand why. They're pretty. They look pretty similar, but and there's a lot of third party ones out there that uh, had had been out there with uh, the, the original AirPods Pro. So. I guess once we get them out in the wild, we'll we'll start hearing more about this. So uh, it's going to be uh, interesting to see where that goes with the tips. Um, and then uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Apple Watch Ultra. That's out in the hands of many. I'm sure I'm sure many of you have already have um, listened to some of the influencers out there. I I Justine and M M K H D and uh, and all those guys and gals. Um, uh, seems like it's a uh, Getting some pretty good reviews. Not something I would be interesting interested in, but uh, I know a few of you already have got your Apple Watch Series Eight, right? Um, mm-hmm. And uh, Jeff, you got yours, and it's, it's all rocking. Yeah, mine showed up today. Okay, so you haven't probably haven't set it up just yet. <laughs> oh no, it's set up and on. <laughs> what am I I'm thinking? I, why do I even ask, why do I even question that? You, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, I was going to say you, you, up, you, you update everything immediately. So <laughs> Rem- remember who you're talking know, to, like, David. I mean, come on, man. Excuse me. <laughs> Uh, when, no, it, it, it's okay. All, I mean, it, it's crazy. We do it on, times. A, we do it on the cars forget. on the way home I, I, yeah. from the mall. Have you done that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you set up the? Uh, oh, I, I have. have yeah, watches, sitting in my car, I've already set up my portable, iPhone. Yeah, a portable charger with me, and I get you know that hour. That hour drive is going to be you know I'm going to put that to work and get my. Well, and setting up an, an Apple Watch. Yeah. It's a, I mean, it's a you need that thing. whole hour drive. It really does. <laughs> Oh my gosh! It's better now, but like you know, the, the Apple Watch Three, I used to joke I could update my my phone, my my Mac, my TV, uh, all after one one after another, and my watch will still be kind of doing that little tick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and Chuck, you got one as well. No, oh, you didn't. I didn't. Okay, not. so you and I have not. I We're did, both. We, we we both stayed with the seven. Yeah, I mean, I've stayed with the seven because well, for. One big reason that is that the improvements to the eight yeah, that I've seen really don't feel like they apply to me. Um, yep. You know, I'm not not being smart because oh. I'm not female, and so you know I don't need to. to I don't benefit from that. Um, the rest of the features don't seem like they're enough of an upgrade for me. Yep. But I reserve the right to take a look at it, and I also, mm. much to my own surprise, I reserve the right to go in and try on um, an, an Apple Watch Ultra. Yeah. No, I, because I'm seeing so many interesting things about this. I, I'd love to give credit to the article, one of the articles I read today, and I'm sorry I can't, but or it was maybe it was yesterday. Anyway, that you know they were praising um, the the action button and just yeah. what a, a kind of a game changer it is. Mm-hmm. And this person was not, um, you know, a, a a a big athlete of any kind. So um, you know, I. I've got to go and look at it. I'm not anxious to spend that much more for a watch that whose primary function seems to be things that I probably will not be engaging in anytime soon. But at the same time, you know, I'd be crazy if I didn't take a look at oh, it. Oh yeah. I, and see I and, definitely want to go to an Apple store and try it on and, and see it. 
Um, yeah, I've seen folk, uh, folk. I've seen already some of the YouTube videos, and you know, people have small wrists, and boy, it's it's a big watch. Um, but I'm so I was always used to before I started wearing Apple Watch all the time. And I used to have you know big size watches, and and so uh, for me, being a big guy, it's not gonna. It would probably fit nicely for me, but uh, it all will depend on how it's, it is. And it's a, it's a screen size. It's yeah, basically. It. I mean, well, I, again, for me, for me, I've never out once have I said I wish my watch has an, another button. It never was an issue for me. To That's have because you haven't had an, an Apple Watch Ultra yet. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, even I, I, <laughs> I don't, I don't run enough. I say or, that half or, joking. Yeah, <laughs> but. Right now, it's probably even got one button too many at this point, so it's 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 fine. Um, the Ultra has a the nice screen and the flat screen, and that's what appeals to me. Yeah. Obviously, uh, you know, bigger screen is good. But I but I thought about it today, though. I mean, you guys correct me. Is there any feature in the Ultra that's not in the Eight? Like, what f- does it have a sensor that the Eight doesn't have? What does it do differently? I know it has the extra button. But what does it what what does it do that the eight doesn't do? Well, I mean, battery life, um, uh, and it was uh, it was tested by Marcus Brownlee. He he actually went through it, and he said he it, it was at almost three days, and he had still a twenty percent battery left life left on the on right. the ultra. So. But it, but that's not a feature; that's an improvement. So what? Well, well kind of is. I mean, okay, yeah, I, I, and, and and Warren, I would say that you know the other one is the um, is I guess the three speakers. And two mics, right? That you use are, for calls. I guess. Yeah, calls yeah. and and the emergency. You know that that uh, that the siren that's built on. It's got eighty five decibel siren, siren yeah. and yeah. and it's got Again, uh, uh, the water temperature water sensor. Water temperature sensor. So yeah. I always so with the calls, I always try to avoid talking on the watch. Right? I don't know about you guys, mm-hmm. but it's my once in a while choice. I do it. Uh, or at least my you know my my first choice is phone, then Mac, maybe watch if I have to. But do you think this will get you more attuned to talk on it? If you could, they could hear you better and you could hear them better, I guess, right? Um, Warren, I tell you, I've I've used my watch surprise a surprising amount, and I think that uh, they've they've gotten better as we've gone along. That the, the you know the quality of the calls, because now it used to be I could tell that that someone was on their watch. Now I have a I I call a couple people on a fairly regular basis. And I know they are, they're answering on their watch, and it's I know only because I know them, not because it sounds like it. Okay. And so you know, if these mics and and the then the speaker make a bigger difference, you know, okay. I mean that that's fine. You know, I don't have a problem with that. And I think most so, people don't because of privacy. I mean, obviously, if if you have the option to, if you're walking in public, you have the option to put the phone to your ear instead of having everybody hear you. That's what you're going to do. Yeah. I, you know what? I don't know about that because mm-hmm. I see an awful lot of people walking around, yeah. you know, with their ah, phones, or, you know, in front of them, the speaker. talking, and you can hear everything mm-hmm. that's going on. They got the speaker on. Oh, I'm not no. saying there's people doing, but I don't. I mean, I, I mean, well, personally, there's a lot of people uh, do. To, to be, <laughs> to be not like rude, I put the phone to my ear and don't let people like, you know, I kind of look at people who do that. Funny, because it's rude. Like if you're in a restaurant and somebody's doing that, it's kind of rude. Yeah. Yeah, but well, you look at everybody funny. Right? <laughs> I do. <That's> <laughs> um, so it, it definitely interesting. What, go ahead, Jeff. Oh, uh, I decided since uh, we were talking about well, what features does the Ultra have that the others don't? Maybe I should look it up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what a concept. I know. Okay, so what we missed was uh, water resistant to 100 meters. Right. Also includes the uh, um, uh, Oceanic Plus app coming in the f- and coming later. Uh, It'll be coming soon. And then there's something else in here that uh, that we missed. Well, it, let's the see. Depth, it's got it measures how deep you are in, in the water as well as the the temperature. I saw uh, right. I saw a demo that right. they, and, they did it and it was amazing. But as far as health features for a normal person, like who's not doing all this stuff the health features are the same between the eight and the ultra, I guess, or as far yeah. as that goes. Or less. Yeah. Oh, I found the other thing that, that we missed precision dual frequency. Oh, GPS, right. The GPS. As yeah, opposed in my to, head, I to the that. single right. antenna GPS. Yeah, it's got the three, I think three bands. I believe it is. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So here's the thing with GPS antennas. When you have one antenna, you need to 
to uh, have enough time for the satellites to move overhead right. so that uh, that your receiver can uh, calculate the difference uh, in movement between the GPSs and use that as uh, as sort of uh, uh, an extrapolated triangulation. Right. The more antennas you have, the more precision you have. So if you have three antennas, you can uh, uh, get your position uh, much faster because you can get data from three antennas simultaneously. And when you have at least three antennas, now you can do GPS altitude as well. Mm, okay. So, so the question is, if you were stranded and needed the GPS signal, you would have a better chance of surviving with the Ultra than the regular eight? Is that a valid statement? Um, I don't think so. I mean, well, potentially. The thing is... Um, if you can hit multiple antennas, or excuse me, multiple uh, satellites at the same time, you get uh, location acquisition f- faster and more accurately. But so, yeah, I suppose that, you could say that that uh, you do have a higher chance of survival <laughs> because there's a higher likelihood that um, you'll have an accurate position on your GPS. Yes, I mean, speed is everything, right? So, I mean, um, again, if it's if you have an ultra on and you're able to communicate that you're in trouble and it takes a minute compared to five, you know, four minutes could kill you. So, I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. If, um, if I were doing more outdoor activity than I am right now and I had the money to spare, right. I would have uh, an ultra as a second Apple watch. So I'd have, so I'd have my Series 8 from around town, and then when I go uh, out into the mountains, I'd put on the Ultra instead. Right. So I think if you're a person who could be in these situations more than a normal person, yeah, it makes 100% to get the Ultra over the 8. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you just want the bigger screen, which is not a bad reason. And that's why I want yeah. to. Yeah. I mean, there are going to be people out there that buy this out, this Ultra just just to have it. I mean, and not even sure. use oh, sure. anywhere near the features it offers. I mean, I mean, if I were to get it, I'm not going to be scuba diving yeah. anytime soon. So, <laughs> so, well, but yeah, and if I had it, I wouldn't be scuba diving either. Yeah. But no, I'd be yeah. playing in the mountains all the time. But I'd, yeah, be, but happy, listen, I'd be happy yeah. having a louder, bigger phone. That would be that's if I had it. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, is it worth $300? Is it worth $300 to have a louder, bigger phone that I know that I'm going to buy a new one next year? Because we do every year. Right. So that's the question for I have. Go ahead, Jack. Well, and I, and I also, I mean, look, there, we all own devices that are manufactured by Apple that we don't use to their fullest potential. And we also own devices made by Apple that we don't use all the features because they don't apply to what we do, right. whatever that happens to be. So, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to damn the, the Apple watch ultra for that. Um, you know, it just, it's just going to be a matter of, you know, does it, does it suit you? And do you have the extra three hundred dollars? And Warren, I think you bring up a great, you know, that's a great point. That you know, if every, these these watches come out every year, mm-hmm. and so you know, what now, if you get on the trade in bandwagon, you know, th- the smart thing to do is make your trade as soon as you can get the, your hands on your new one and trade the old one in right. to maximize right. it. So you aren't laying out that you're only you're only laying out the delta. You're not laying out, you know, a whole nother full. Purchase price. Right. I would bet. I would bet that next year's watch is going to have the option for the size of the Ultra without the sporty aspect. Very possible. Like, I would. I would bet money, and that's the watch I'll get because that's what I would get. Because people, it's, 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 it's very possible. Like a stripped down and version. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, David stripped down, or you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see the action button if it becomes yeah. as big a thing as it's being made out to be right now right. Sure. by the reviewers. Wouldn't be a bit surprising to see um, that extra button added in some fashion to the Apple Watch 9. This watch could be, you know, sometimes Apple releases these one-off products that are kind of the jolt to the next generation of how it's going to look. Uh, 12-book MacBook is the is the example, right? Because they came out with this kind of one-off quirky kind of thing right. that was specialized use, which was going to be an ultra-portable executive thing. And that Apple kind of said halfway through after releasing it this is our new design language this is where we're going so could happen with this watch it could be that's where we're going with this watch yeah 
So it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. Um, I'm going to sure we'll be here a lot more about the Ultra. I, I can't wait. I'm going to yeah, try to get into the Apple Store soon. I want to at least try it on, check it out, and see it in person. But uh, I'm going to resist. <laughs> at, least, at least try to. Um, the... Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Uh, uh, other than Jeff, uh, the three of us, Chuck and Warren and myself, have the 14 Pro Max. Um, and uh, we've had it for a week now. And uh, I wanted to get the panel's uh, first impressions of of how they like it and uh, what's what really stands out. Uh, I'll start with you, Chuck. I, I, I know, like 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 me and like Warren, you, you're, you're, you uh, upgrade pretty much every year. So... Um, what what what's what's made you happy so far with the 14 Max 14 Pro Max? Um, I've I've you know first of all I haven't run into any of the bugs we talk, we've talked about here. Okay. Um, that that's the first thing. The second thing I mentioned the lock screen widgets, mm-hmm. um, dynamic island. Uh, you know, for all the the jokes that have been made about the name of it, um, I think it has so much potential. Um, I'm liking what I see so far and. It really hasn't been opened up to developers fully yet, right. um, and certainly they haven't had a chance to to do anything with it except a couple developers developed strange little pets for it, and somebody else developed a pong game for it. And yep. you know that's fine; those are those are tests of what they can and can't do. But I I, I think that's going to be a big improvement, um, and that sort of straddles that edge between iOS 16 and iPhone 14. Um, so. Right. The camera is flat out amazing, yeah. especially if you t- if you crank up the uh, the Pro Raw and and its full file size. I mean, it's staggering just yep. just the detail you can get out of it. Yeah, it also means that you're going to occupy a whole lot of space with those images. You want so you want with, you know you, you go to that one terabyte, right? I went to I went to the one terabyte because I want to do some video work with it, mm-hmm. and this may be my new my new uh, mobile Could be. interview rig um, mm-hmm. as opposed to, you know, I may, I may finally retire the, the, the old iPad and go with this because the camera is just so amazing yeah. and, you know, drop it into airplane mode and you've, you've got all the benefits of the computational photography. Now I will have, a, you know, a full terabyte of storage, which is something I didn't even have on the iPad. I'll probably need it if I, you know, depending on what camera settings I use. So, I just I have nothing. I have no hesitancy about recommending this phone right now. I agree. Um, it's it's big. You know, if if the bigness bothers you, don't get the Max. Get the Pro. Yeah, but yeah. What's uh, what stand out? What it. stand out for you, Warren? Um, what really stood out for me actually was the brightness of this thing. Yeah, it is much brighter than my yeah, old two thousand nits. Is it? <laughs> It was much better than the 13 and to the, to the point where I actually, for the first time ever in a long time, turned down the brightness uh, as a setting. I always been full brightness because I like it um, to be like that, but uh, it's actually too bright. Um, you know, maybe if I left the house, it wouldn't be as bright, but, um, but yeah. Why would you ever want to leave your house? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, edibles. <laughs> now I can leave my house. Now I can leave my house. Yeah. Now I can leave my house uh, because uh, the Apple Maps still works. Again. Oh, right. So you won't be walking in a circle. I won't be in a anymore. circle. Or jump, yeah. or jump in a lake. But, uh, <laughs> or jump in a lake. But if I jump in a lake, I better get the Ultra because I'll need to scuba. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, the brightness is cool. Um, the notification uh, center, is, um, the island gimmicky name, it's fine it's neat um i talked a little bit maybe tuesday in landscape mode it's a little funny looking but they'll fix that yeah um i did have the the gps bug obviously in the beta but i also had the copy and paste bug in the non-beta so i mean i I saw that one too um you know i want to see some neat things with the uh the dynamic island like uh maybe a night rider you know the Oh yeah, the little Cylon yeah. light. Yeah, yeah that would be awesome. I, yeah, <laughs> just have that go and go and go like that. Um, faster, Warren. I have a question for you. Yeah, go for it. Um, are Are you going to find a wallpaper that makes it look like you have a notch, so your wife doesn't know you have a notch? <laughs> <laughs> so my my wife is uh, landed. She's uh, this is this is gonna see what happens. So I mean, it's been an interesting week, right? My she knows my son got the phone because uh, she saw that. Um, 
I'm, I'm going to turn on always on display and let it ride. Let's see how it goes. And uh, okay. can't, can't hide that. Right. <laughs> so, so uh, oh. I think, I think, I, I honestly think that she hasn't asked me. And I think she knows that it hey, happens. I, I, I can't believe she doesn't know that you upgrade every year. <laughs> I tell her, and we and we go through a fight, like a little play fight every year. And every year I say, you know, she's oh. like, I know you're just going to do this every year. I'm like, fine. So every year we go through the same day of I- I- issue. And that's about it. It's the circle of life. Hakuna Matata. Yeah. Listen, you know, we, we need to, we need things to talk about my wife and I sometimes, and this is something to talk there about. There you go. So, the fighting of it. So, um, but yeah. Actually, no, Warren, but, I do have a legit question for you. Go for it. Um, so since you're playing with all the different devices all the time, hmm. um, are you noticing that the uh, the weight increase, which is what, like an ounce, half an ounce, is, is that really noticeable for you? On the phone? On the phone. I'm, I mean, no, not really. I mean, uh, you know, I noticed it by when I tried to put my old 13 plus cases on it. And, and you had to drum all the cases? Well, I, I did it, like <laughs> I put one on. I probably I didn't even think of that. I have thirteen uh, uh, Pro Max cases. So I put one I on, and I'm like, <laughs> I put one on. And I'm like, oh, it's gonna work. It's gonna work. But it was holding down. No, and like the vo- it kept rebooting because vo- it kept holding down its own buttons. Yeah, the buttons These, are the volume, shifted. Yeah. The volume yeah. control buttons are so off. Can, yeah, yeah. Hmm. So I, I would have to like drummle, like like you said, and uh, I, I'm not doing that. So um, no, it's um, it, it feels. Exactly like my old So uh, I'll I'll say for me I I think I I, I see some performance jumps. I mean I feel I, I feel it's it's a more robust and um, fast experience. Um, uh, which leads me into Dynamic Island because that's kind of the thing I'm really I've been super excited about and what it does and uh you know a lot of the things that it does is is just amazing and the fact of being able to just bring up whatever you're working on go up into that dynamic island and get to it is just is awesome because you always you know it's what you had to do before you had to swipe down look for the app and go or or, or swipe up and look what's running and then thumb through them and go to the app and now it's if it's if it's an app that supports it you just go up to that dynamic island and t- tap it it brings you right to where you need to go um it's got tran- tr- transaction conf- confirmations with Apple Pay, which I, I really like. It shows those. The, I, I really love that the Face ID is up at the top now for unlocking. It's that because it was always below, and you never know if it was working right. And it seems to be better th- there. Uh, but all the things that are for alerts are just there. The battery life, um, silent mode is about off and on. It's there, um, and uh, y- any, any music app that's in the dy- dy- dynamic uh, uh, that that will reside in the in the dynamic island then. Including Spotify and uh, WhatsApp and and any any communication type things, and the phone is is so much easier to get to now. You don't have to have the big screen; you just tap it and it's there. And uh, I like how it has the uh, it, it shows you when someone's speaking. It's got the, the the sound bars that are showing as as someone speaks, and um, so it it's pretty awesome. I I I think it's uh, uh I think it's got some. Things to go yet. Uh, you know, good, other good examples. If you do Lyft, um, you get a Lyft uh, t- a taxi. You can uh, have that right there. You don't have to toggle to the app, and that's. I think that's going to happen as more third-party apps start coming up on board with the dynamic, uh, with the dynamic island. So, um, impressed with what they did with it. I, I, I think it's something that's cool. I, I know there was a rumor. I wasn't going to really make a big deal out of it, but they're already rumoring. You know, we, we get these new iPhone 14s, and now they're already talking about the iPhone 15. I mean, uh, that. Uh, they're saying that, that that's going to probably be I, – I guarantee people are going to be really excited the fact that, that it's going to be across all of the iPhones in, in the, you know, next year. So I, do, I definitely see this as something that's uh, here to stay. So it's I'm, I'm impressed with the phone. Um, I, I already sent back my 13 Pro Max, so I'm stuck with it now. So uh, <laughs> You're stuck with it. <laughs> so I, I have an observation about, about the um, Dynamic Island, okay. and I'll start – I'll preface this with, I'm actually really excited about seeing uh, the dynamic Island in action Uh, that and the, uh, and the new cameras to me were, were the most exciting things uh, for the new iPhones. Okay. But the dynamic Island, when you think about it, what Apple did was said, let's just say this one place on the screen, this is where we're we're just going to show controls and information. And we'll make it bigger and smaller. And people are flipping out right. like this is the most revolutionary thing that's ever happened. 
any phone can have a dynamic island on it if you just design the interface so there's an area where that's where this stuff shows. Right. Except um, a notch. If there's a national notch in there, you can't. Yeah, because, but I mean, so put the dynamic island somewhere else. I mean, right. because that's Wait. just a software thing. Well, Android so, phones are copying. To, that's the story yeah. today is Android phones are actually emulating exactly they are? what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, my God. They're making okay, well, their own dynamic go. islands because you can, right? It's just basically yeah. once. It's like you said, it's ones and nose up there. So that's all they're doing is turning lights on and off. So, yeah. So, yeah. So on, on one hand, this is crazy that people are flipping out over Apple saying this area here on the screen, we're just dedicating that to information. Oh my God. And, but at the same time, what they're doing is actually pretty cool. And, and of course the uh, uh, Android developers are making their own dynamic islands now too. Oh yeah. Of course. It's, are. it's going to, it's going to get huge. So you're muted, David. Um, yeah. It, uh, it, that, yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so it, it's definitely going to get something huge. I mean, this is this is this is more to come. I think in the next few months we're going to see more and more things that this dynamic island uh, it does. So uh, I am looking forward to seeing what people but, do with this. But Jeff, you make your observation is interesting because the iPhone and the and the and to a lesser degree, especially as it's evolved, the iPad have always been sort of a single single application device. And now that's eroding just a little bit, yeah. just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And and I and I and I'm not saying I don't. I, I I too love it, but you know the lock screen. I mean the lock screen now is becoming an information screen, yeah, right. and you you get this sense that th- this is part of the evolution. And I think it's the uh, part of the evolution of the OS, but it's also an evolution of us. That you know there was a time that you say, oh my god, I'm. Well, Brittany brought it up earlier this week, mm-hmm. you know, that how much of a distraction is this for the those of us who can be easily distracted? Right. And, mm-hmm. you know, and, and can, do you have the ability to turn it off if you are one of those that, that has that predilection? So, you know, I, I don't know. It just, I mean, I, I, I've, I've, I'm kind of happy to see it because for me it works. And I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think it's really interesting to see that yeah. – we're all sophisticated enough now that we can deal with that much more information or we figured out that, yeah, there's a benefit to having some of those controls and that information on the screen when I'm doing something completely different. Yep. I agree. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, for the sake of time here, I want to just get a few, get a few more things in here. Uh, there was a, there was a story here that mentioned that the, uh, the iPhone 14 pro does feature a faster 5g speeds because of a new modem chip. Uh, the speeds on T-Mobile and Verizon networks in the U.S. compared to the 13 Pro were uh, much faster because of of that. And the article and link in the show notes shows that yeah, it's uh, quite a bit faster with download speeds. Uh, and this is thanks to this the Qualcomm Snapdragon X65 modem that's offering these speeds. So, so there's there's another enhancement there that wasn't really talked about. And uh, uh, and that so Chuck. You yes. need to run some speed tests on your phone because you have Mint, right? Mint Mobile. I not on this phone. Okay, here's where I'm going with this. Okay. Uh, Mint Mobile uses uh, T-Mobile's network right. as an MVNO. So if T-Mobile has bumped up their, or, or if you can get faster 5G speeds uh, on T-Mobile now, does that carry over to the MVNOs? It should. All right. First, first of all, it's, it, I mean. Faster 5G speeds in my house is like, you know, faster of garbage. I mean, it really depends on where you are. But um, I have noticed outside of my house, I've seen pretty good uh, um, 5G uh, on T-Mobile since this phone may be a little bit faster than before. You know, but I was getting, if you get a good 5G signal, you're getting, um, I've seen 600. Yeah, my... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've gotten some crazy 5G speeds yeah. on my 12 Pro on and AT&T. Coming, yeah, and they're coming more and more, you know, available, which is, I love it. I mean, yeah. yeah, so you get it to a place where you get that kind of speed. So, you know, if you get an extra 100 out of this uh, this new, you know, chip, then awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, as as I mentioned earlier, uh, I, uh, iOS 16.0.2 just got released today as we uh, record this. It does address some of the bugs. It's not addressing all of the bugs. 
the number the notable bugs was the camera may vibrate and cause blurry photos. I guess there was some TikTok users who were complaining that was happening, and that Apple did acknowledge that. Uh, they uh, the display may appear black during device setup, and then the copy and paste uh, uh, annoyance. Uh, and you said some of you guys said you don't didn't see that, which was interesting. But uh, it I've it, been dealing with the copy and paste annoyance on my iPhone 12 Pro. Okay. So, so that the six, uh, mm. but I, the, the problem is that, uh, oh no, this, I believe this is on all iPhones. This is, this release is so, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm putting it on my 12 right now. Yeah. So, uh, so it did fix some of those bugs. Uh, uh, real quick, I'll go, just go through some of the other bugs that they talked about. Uh, one of the things that not- was notable for me was, uh, and, and, and it was, it was with, with the, uh, um, with CarPlay. Uh, this was noted. It was noted that uh, uh, car, CarPlay was not working properly with uh, with audio, and people weren't able to hear me uh, to uh, uh, very very loudly uh, because uh, of an annoyance of, that uh, it, it just wasn't working. And I, thus I would, my wife just kept telling me, like, you know, I can't hear you. I can't hear you." And then I would hang. I would say, "Let me call you back," and I would come. And I would come back again, and it was really soft. And then, sure enough, after she told me that today, I found you know, I found the article that said that uh, the CarPlay is having some issues too with uh, with the iPhone 14. I was seeing it too with my my wireless uh, CarPlay uh, device. I have it's, it was having a heck of a time connecting, so I was, was plugging it in with wired connections. So. So we are seeing some bugs out there. Uh, let's 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 say that the fact that 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 it, it is uh, they they got some a little bit of work to do uh, when it comes to these. David, yeah. Do you mind if I ask you? Because um, I'm one of the things I didn't I haven't seen addressed. I haven't read every article, mm-hmm. but and and I don't know if this is just completely off the wall or not. But I'm what what vehicle are you using CarPlay in? I use it in a Dodge Charger, so it's in it's using utilizing UConnect. Um, I. It has CarPlay built into the to, into the head unit as well as I have bought one of those uh, those wireless uh, devices you can plug in uh, that that simulates wireless that I can connect. I was able to connect no problem with my 13 Pro Max, but now it's uh, uh, now it's it's been kind of buggy. It's not it, it won't connect right away or it doesn't connect at all. I so said I have to end up plug, plugging it in wired. Um, okay. So just just curious because I'm I'm wondering about that. You know, I'm wondering if. If um, a particular head, set of head units for a particular car manufacturer may be giving the issues, or whether it's you know completely software based, I, I would I would wonder because yeah, it would, that, this would include Dodge, Jeep, um, uh, any of the uh, the Chrysler products because um, that's they're all the same. So um, I agree with you. I would wonder to see uh, where that goes. So. Um, yeah. I can't go with the, uh, without talking a little bit about some of the iOS uh, 16 items that uh, we we've, were going to talk about this week. A um, couple things of, of of things we can actually do some change. Uh, the uh, the search button. I don't know if you, have you all you guys turned that off because it is it is definitely different uh, I, to say the least. I, I guess you could get used to it when you you tap this that search bar the search box that's below at the bottom just above your your set of four icons. Um, uh, I barely notice it. Doesn't bother, bother you. Yeah, I, I've left it on too. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I just wanted to note that noted that, that if someone did have a problem with it, you can uh, you can easily go to, go into the settings and turn that off by going into settings, go to tap home screen, and then you can go under search and then toggle off the switch that says uh, uh, show on home screen as far as search goes. So if you uh, if you so choose to do that, you can. Um, there's also I, something I didn't know about is the iPhone 14 Pro has a hidden toggle to enable black and white always on uh, display mode. Uh, you are able to do that by going into the focus under settings, uh, go to enable dim lock screen. So now when focus mode is activated, the dim lock screen will set and it will be enforced. So when your iPhone 14 goes into always on display mode, uh, the whole lock screen transforms into a simple black and white mode. So that's something that might be, you know, easy on someone's eyes. You don't want it to be so bright when uh, it's uh, on your bedside. Um, so a couple, couple cool things as far as uh, that can do. I don't know if that's too notable for anybody that wants to do that. So, um, but other thing I was kind of in, in interested to see is, and I, I I'll ha- we'll have a, a extra screenshot in the show notes here is, uh, you know, when you connect your AirPods to your, to your iPhone, you, you know that it would be buried somewhere into the audio settings. You can get, had to get to it. Right. 
Well, now when you connect your AirPods, you go under settings and it shows your, your account name. And then the next line under that is the AirPods. So you, instead of it being deep in settings, now you can get right to it and, you know, check the settings and check anything and make, make sure that the, that the AirPods are set properly. And, uh, and, and, and I think that was kind of cool. I, I, it, it was kind of a cool feature. They fine. Yeah. Way. Make, making it, uh, that should have yeah. been there from the very beginning with AirPods. Yes. Yeah, no, I agree. It, it just got buried. Um, it just got buried the, the deep in there. So, uh, but, uh, uh, so some of the notable things I found this week, uh, with iOS 16, there's again, so much more. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely add some stuff here. Uh, the, uh, the always on display, quite of a debate. Uh, we're going to, we're going to, uh, talk about that next week because uh, you know, we're getting close to time on here. And uh, I know uh, some people have been not happy with it and others are getting used to it. So it's just like the search. I have the search on. I, I was used to it and uh, always on. You, you, you get used to it. First day I was dealing with battery drainage, but uh, I think uh, it's kind of subsided itself. So, uh, But uh, with that, let's uh, go ahead and wrap things up for this week. It's uh, as we've come to a close of another show here. Um, that's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS. Support the show by buying me a coffee at InTouchWithIOS.com slash coffee. We would really appreciate it. You can also become a patron of the show by going to Patreon.com slash InTouchWithIOS. We have two tiers available to support the show. We would really appreciate it. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe so you're notified when we are live streaming, which is usually on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash InTouchWithIOS, where you can watch and listen to past shows. Uh, visit In Touch With iOS magazine on Flipboard, where many of the topics we discuss are flipped into that magazine. The link is in our show notes. You can subscribe to the show in your favorite podcatcher, inclu- including Mimir, Pocket Hasts, Overcasts, and many others. But better yet, go to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com, where all the ways and all the, all the links to all the ways that you can listen to us are there. And I am Dave Ginsburg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. And uh, Chuck Joyner, thank you. Thanks again for being here. Always great to have you on the show. And where can people find you? Thank you. <coughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Thank you, David. A little struggling with the voice tonight, a little. Okay. Um, you can find me at, on uh, on. Yeah. You can find me at macvoices.com. Uh, that's where I have a lot of interesting people. I'm also doing some new things uh, moving forward. Today, I published what I think are some iPhone new iPhone essentials. Just watch it. It was awesome. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we do Mac Voices Live Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, whatever time that is, wherever you are, on YouTube at youtube.com slash TV with Dave, Warren, Jeff, and a lot of our other friends. Um, and on the socials, you can find me as both at Chuck Joyner and at Mac Voices. I'll try to rest my voice for next time, Dave. Okay. No. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. And Jeff Gamut, always appreciate you being here. And uh, where can people find you? It's always fun to be here and uh, people can find me on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. I'm Jay Gamut on all of those. And uh, uh, like Chuck said, with, with you and Warren on Tuesdays on, uh, on Mac Voices Live, then on Thursdays on the big show and then here with you on Thursday evenings on In Touch with iOS and then on Fridays on the uh, the Mac show and then the context machine because Brian Chaffin and I apparently couldn't get enough of each other and so we teamed back up. Great show as well. Lisa. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, Warren, uh, Sklar, where can people find you? Thanks for being here. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, normal places. Uh, I do want to say, Chuck, I listened to your show with the... Um, you were at a users group. Uh, you had a couple of people. Yeah, Long Island. And that was, yeah, who yeah. Was, it was Long Adam, Island. Who was yeah, uh, Adam, Adam, Adam Anks was the guest. Love him. He was great. Great show. So, um, yeah, I'd never heard of him before, but I mean, he's really, really cool. No, I don't you know, follow him. <laughs> I never heard of any of them. Well, or I just I we got to get you out. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, that, that's I, like I, saying you've never heard of Dave Ginsburg or Chuck Joyner. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. uh, I'm not sure about that, Jeff. But. But. Strangely enough, real fast, I, Chuck Joyner I heard of before I even got into the Apple world. So uh, that tells only, you how big Chuck is. Yeah. Yes, oh, you're the geez. only one. I, you're the only one I actually even heard of before I kind of got here. So, congrats. Um, but yeah, no, <laughs> it was a, it was a, it was a good show. I, I, I enjoyed it. Thanks. Um, 
And uh, yeah, uh, uh, next week might be a little. No, next week is good. So I'll see you guys All next right. week. Great. And thank you for listening. We really appreciate you supporting the show and listening. We enjoy doing it. And we'll talk again soon. Bye.